Welcome everyone. So, so far we have been looking at Markov policies in either the Markov decision processes domain or in the stochastic control domain. Um, now, the reason I had articulated some time back uh, to you uh, was that it, it is without loss of generality one can actually work with Markov, Markov policies. Although if you recall we had also discussed other types of policies such as history dependent policies and history dependent randomized policies. Now what we will do today is actually prove that there is no benefit to be gained in a stochastic control or a problem or an MDP problem if you use the history and if you and if you do randomization. So in other words the optimal cost that you can get under history dependent randomized policies will be shown as equal to that under deterministic Markov policies. So, in a, so consequently without loss of generality one can work with only Markov policies. Markov policies as we have seen have uh, elegance, simplicity, easy to explain, easy to understand uh, and so on. And we so, so this result will actually give us the license to use these kind of policies in our problems. So just for you to recap, uh, remember that we had defined these classes of policies H uh, pi H or pi H D was the class of history dependent randomized history dependent deterministic policies. And every decision rule in this policy, uh, any policy here which belongs to a small pi that belongs to this capital pi HD, this, uh, this policy comprises of decision rules, let us call these uh, decision rules say mu 0 to mu n minus 1, the, uh, the, these decision rules uh, or strategies at each stage. And the property, the, the character of these decision rules was that if you take the decision rule at any time t, this maps the history up until that time t to an action at time t. Now and with the, with the constraint that when a, whatever history you have, you would always be taking an action that is available from that uh, at that at this based on the state that you are in. So remember the history at time t was denoted h t and this comprised of all the sequence of states and actions that you have taken so far. So s0, a0, s1, a1 all, all the way till s t minus 1, a t minus 1 and also the state at time t. So this is the entire history of the problem up until that time t. So um, uh, the uh, 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 history dependent deterministic decision rule mapped this entire vector S0, A0, S1, A1 all the way till S t minus 1, A t minus 1 and S t to an action to an action A t where A t belong to A s t where A s t is the set of actions that we have at time t. This was our uh, this was a deterministic history dependent decision rule or deterministic history dependent strategy. Now uh, the uh, there was similarly a concept of a randomized policies and this is the class this is the set of all history dependent randomized policies and what these policies did was that suppose if pi belonged to the class of history dependent randomized policies and pi is say mu 0 to mu n minus 1 then we had then the then pi base then each of these mu t's they mapped the history on at that time 
to a probability distribution on the set of actions, a probability distribution on the set of actions and you had the property that if you consider the history up until a certain time. and looked at the probability distribution that this created and let us denote this probability distribution by uh, let us denote this for simplicity by q mu t of h t. This is a distribution. So, this distribution had the property that uh, had the property that q mu t of h t of a t of a let us say is greater than equal to 0 for all a and if you sum this over the actions that are available at time t that sum should be 1. In other words this probability distribution is supported on this set a t that we have uh, uh, a s t that we have here. Okay. Now, what are the costs and what are the transition probabilities under such policies? So, suppose you have chosen a, uh, a, a policy a history dependent randomized policy then the reward that you get at time t uh, 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 when you are in, in say state s and you choose a history dependent randomized policy. Uh, and so, you what you are applying at time t is this is the decision rule mu t then the mu then mu t is a function of the history up until that time t h t. So, let me call this denote also by t. So, s t is the state at time t h t is the history up until time t r t of s t comma mu t of h t mu t of h t is now I am going to assume that mu t is. So, if this was so let us let us take two cases if mu t of h t is uh, is a deterministic history dependent policy then this this directly mu t is of h t is directly the action that you would take at that time. So, then this would automatically become just simply r t of s t comma a t you would take where a t is the action prescribed by the decision rule or by the strategy. Okay. So, uh, so when when so this is this is if mu t uh, uh, if your policy is history dependent and deterministic. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if if the policy is if if the policy that you are considering is is history dependent and randomized then the reward that you get from choosing a decision rule reward from this decision rule is actually not you do not specify any spe one you cannot specify any one particular action with this with this decision rule because you get up what you this decision rule gives you is a probability distribution on the set of actions. And but remember that this this distribution is supported on the the action set, uh, the set of actions that you have available at that time. So this what we will what uh, the reward that is taken as the expectation over the actions that this policy uh, that that the probability distribution is supported on. So in other words, this is then equal to summation over. Comma a R T of S T comma a, where a ranges over R T of S T comma a multiplied by I forget this multiplied by mu T of H T of a, okay. where a ranges over the feasible actions in state S T. So this becomes R. Uh, this becomes the reward under a, a uh, the, the reward that you get when you choose a randomized history dependent policy. Now, 
remember here this is the reward uh, the, uh, the in this reward the expectation is only been has only been taken over the randomization that the policy is creating. In addition to this there is a random there are other random variables here which is the state at that time and the history up until that time. So, these have we have not yet taken the expectation over these two. So, the total uh, the, the actual expected reward that you get in would involve not only an expectation over this randomization because of the random choice of the action, but also an expectation over the, the states and uh, you know the history and so on. Okay, so, so the, uh, the, the, the total reward that we actually have is, is the sum over let us say time going from 0. Uh, uh, so, the expect total expected reward is expectation of you have your terminal reward R n of S n plus you have a reward for each of your time steps t equals 0 to n minus 1 R t of S t comma mu t of H t where now R where remember this this here is to be picked up from here. Okay. So, if uh, maybe let me just write it that way uh, in, instead of doing writing this this way let me write this as a double summation. So, I have this and I have the sum of actions over this R t of S t comma a multiplied by the probability with which that action is chosen that is q mu t of H t of a and j this here we will denote by j pi. So, j pi and in general this would be a function of the initial state. So, let me write this j pi of S 0. So, j pi of S 0 is the is the expected reward that you would get when you uh, when you use a, a certain policy uh, when you use a certain policy uh, pi in and in particular here this has been written out for a history dependent randomized policy. If the policy is not history depend is not randomized then uh, then it is trivial then one just has to use use this expression here. Okay, one just has to use this expression here to evaluate the evaluate the reward. Let us also write out what the transition probabilities are when we use randomized policies. The transition probabilities under randomized policies so the transition probabilities are the as are as follows you the, you transition to prob to a state j when you are in uh, state s and choose a, a policy uh, and suppose you use a history dependent randomized policy. So, this is let me write this as mu t of of h t again. So, remember this is the action that the policy uh, that the policy specifies or if if you are if you have a deterministic policy, but otherwise we will we will still use this notation as a way as a uh, you know with a little bit of abuse of notation this will will be taken as as simply the following now what is this summation this is the prob the probability that you would get uh, the so what you have in here here you have the the probability of transitioning to state j from state s when you take action a. So, that is been that is this probability, but the probability that you take action a is this alright. So, that that probability is given by this. So, therefore, the probability of the the under pol under the policy 
under the policy pi the probability of transitioning from state S to state J is given by this particular this particular quantity. So, the uh, you have therefore, you have these transition probabilities which are which are for the uncontrolled chain which are being just specified for every state and every action whereas, for the control chain that means, once you put in a particular uh, particular policy the, the states transition with this probability. So, you get to the next state j with, with a probability equal to this. So, in other words this this quantity here is in fact nothing but the probability under the policy pi of transitioning to state j uh, when, when you are currently in state s all right. So, these are, these are your transition probabilities ok. So, now what we will uh, we, now what we will discuss is is how does one actually solve uh, for the optimal poly, uh, optimal uh, history dependent randomized policy. In other words suppose you are looking for uh, suppose you are looking for uh, let us say we call this quantity j star j star of s 0 which is the minimum over all history dependent randomized policies of j pi of s 0. So, we want to here again we are we are minimizing over all history dependent randomized policies of the uh, the the, uh, the cost that you would or the reward that you would get ok. Since we are talking of reward let me make this a maximization. So, the, you are maximizing the reward that you would get under uh, all uh, all history dependent randomized uh, policies uh, the reward that you would get from a particular randomized policy. So, j pi of s 0 is to be is is written out here ok. So, so in the case of Markov policies we what we uh, the way we address this was we, we, we wrote out what was called the principle of optimality and the dynamic programming algorithm. Principle of optimality dynamic programming algorithm. So, this is what we we employed in the case of a uh, when we were looking for the uh, the optimal the optimal policy over the set of Markov policies. So, on the uh, now that we are concerned with history dependent randomized policies the question is how does one actually uh, how does one actually solve this. In other words the the question at hand is is there an analogous principle of optimality and a dynamic programming equation that we can use even for history dependent randomized policies. And the answer to this question is yes. So, there is in fact a, uh, an, an analogous principle of optimality and a dynamic programming equation and in fact that is uh, it in fact that equation looks very similar to the one that we wrote out when we were optimizing over Markov policies. And in fact that equation will also then show us why the, uh, the uh, why deterministic Markov policies are in fact optimal. So, all of this is what we will uh, we will discuss in this lecture. So, in order to uh, in order to discuss the optimality of Markov policies let us define a couple of quantities consider. So, define j star t of h t ok. This is defined as the max over all history dependent randomized policies of of j pi t of h t. Now, what is j pi t? Well, j pi t remember there is a super uh, there is a superscript of pi here which denotes the policy and there is also a, a subscript of time which denotes uh, of t which denotes the time. So, what is j pi t of h t? Well, this is actually equal to the reward 
incurred or obtained however you want to think of it from time t onwards till time till time n under policy under policy pi where pi is in capital pi hr so the reward that we incur uh, or obtain from time t onwards up until time uh, up until time uh, time n starting from history ht now what is the meaning of this see remember here the when i wrote out simply j star without an without a subscript of without a subscript of t here this j star was this particular uh, j star this denoted the optimal policy starting uh, the optimal um, the optimal reward starting from time 0 okay now but you can also talk of op an optimal reward starting from an some intermediate time such as time uh, time 1 or time 2 or something like that and uh, up until the end of the time horizon the same time horizon that has been considered in the uh, to begin with in the problem so that particular optimal reward which for, which is the, uh, the the optimal reward starting at a, an intermediate time till the end of the time horizon of the problem with uh, and assuming you start from a certain history HT that is uh, the the optimal uh, reward from there for that uh, truncated problem is what is denoted by j pi t of HT ok. So, the j pi t of HT is the reward that you would get when you apply a policy pi for that truncated problem ok and the max over all policies pi the maximum over all policies pi is the optimal reward for that particular problem all right so j so j star t of ht is then the optimal reward okay so let me write these down so here this is this has been written here of course and this one here is the optimal reward from time t onwards ok. So, this is the optimal reward from time t onwards all right. So, now what is the principle of optimality for uh, for this for this problem. So, let us uh, let us like write out that there is in fact the same principle of optimality which which simply says that if you uh, the principle of optimality which says simply says that if you uh, consider an optimal policy and look at its truncation from any time onwards up until the end uh, end of the time horizon then the truncated policy is also optimal uh, also optimal for the truncated problem in other words if you can so if we take an optimal policy if pi in pi hr a where pi is equal to mu 0 till mu n minus 1 is optimal for the MDP. then uh, let us call this pi t which is equal to say a policy from time t on where you apply the decision rules from time t onwards till time n minus 1 is optimal for this, this problem the problem of maximizing the 
problem of maximizing j pi t over all policies over all policies pi starting from my history from my history h t ok. So, if you are if you are if your uh, uh, randomized policy is optimal for the entire MDP then you can start it from any intermediate step onwards and it will be optimal for the for the remaining problem as well the tail problem as well ok. So, as a result of this is here the principle of optimality. Now, as a result of this we have a dynamic programming equation also for or, or a Bellman equation for history dependent randomized policies as well. So, the Bellman equation for history dependent randomized policies. The Bellman equation is given in as follows j t of h t. So, uh, is it is it is similar it is almost verbatim similar to the one that we had written out earlier j uh, j t of h t is the max over all actions. A, a in a s t of this reward. So, the reward at at time t the stage wise reward at time t r t of s t comma a t plus the expected reward the expected reward that you would get. Now, remember here you would have now j t plus 1 j t plus 1 with h t replaced uh, with h t plus 1. But what is h t plus 1 now? Well, h t plus 1 is simply h t a comma j right. So, you would reach a state j at the next time step that state j is here you were you had a history of h t up until that time t and you took an action a at at time t ok. So, sorry I there is no a there is no t here. So, this is just a you took an action a at time t, at that time. So, that is your action a. So, the history at time t plus 1 is going to be the history until time t the additional action that you took at time t uh, and the history and the state that you have at time t plus 1 that is j all right. So, this therefore becomes this here is h t plus 1 and this in total is the right hand side of your Bellman equation. So, notice that this is optically very similar to the Bellman equation that we wrote out uh, uh, for Markov policies uh, and that is uh, and that is because there is in uh, in uh, in both cases you have. Oh, so, in addition to this we have the terminal condition which is that J n of H n is equal to R n of S n. And as usual these have to be written out for all histories H n and for all histories H t. So, we will discuss more about this in a moment.